no matter where you hunt or what you hunt with, you're gonna have to deal with wind at some point. Do whitetails have a, a different mindset to the wind depending on where they live, what region of whitetail country? Sure, why wouldn't they? They're different because they've evolved and they live in different environments. Now deer out in the prairies, out in the plains, they have to deal with wind all of the time. So they've, they're more accustomed to dealing with it. And they're more open country deer, so they can see what's going on around them. Deer in the Midwest, not so much. It gets windy they get nervous. I think it's a long held belief by a lot of hunters that deer don't move in windy conditions. And you know, I think it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. Hunters believe that so they don't go out and hunt as much in the wind. One thing you should understand though, no matter where a whitetail lives, they move almost the same amount every day, no matter what's going on. Now you may not see them, because they are moving in a different way and in different locations, but they're up on their feet about the same. You know, I think most hunters view wind, high wind, as a, as a negative, when it can be a positive too. If you're down on the ground still hunting for deer, the, the sound of the wind is gonna help mask your sounds. All that movement, everything moving around, it's gonna help mask some of your movement. You're gonna have a consistent wind direction so you know exactly where your scent's going. So when you're taking it to the deer and you're hunting on the ground, sometimes the wind can be your friend. It's the best masking for your noise ever. It's a cover up and you can go places you usually can't go when it's quiet. Now where should you go? Well if you're an aggressive hunter, now is the time to get close to bedrooms. And if it's pre-rut, say the last two weeks of October, that's a good time to do some creeping into these bedroom edges. So if the wind is in your forecast, your hunting app is telling you things aren't looking too good, then it's time to be a little bit more aggressive than you usually are during hunting season. And we're always talking about too much wind. What about too little wind? What happens when it's just dead calm? I was on a hunt two years ago, Carmen Mountain Whitetail, classic spot and stock hunt in Texas. We had absolutely no wind. I can't tell you how many blown stalks we had because the deer could hear us. Every time we kicked a rock, every time we stepped on a twig, their heads would just snap up. Uh, we hunted for three days and couldn't get anywhere close to deer. Finally, I think it was the fourth day, probably the last day of the hunt, we finally snuck in and got our buck, but it was after a lot of trial and error, believe me. If you're taking an out-of-state hunt, forget what you know from hunting at home. Forget about it, and then be prepared to learn something new about deer that you might never have known before. When we come back, we follow Dan Schmidt on a hunt in the windy sand hills of Nebraska. Land of Whitetail is brought to you by Cuddyback. Cuddylink, 16 cameras, one cell plan, $10 a month. By Thompson Center, America's master gun maker. Get armed and deadly with Easton FMJ Arrows. And by Matthews Archery. Visit sportsmansguide.com today and see why they're the place to go to get where you want to be outdoors. Find the very best deals on the latest gear for hunting, shooting, camping, and everything else under the stars to fuel your passion. Shop sportsmansguide.com. So how do you describe the sand hills of Nebraska? This is native prairie grass. 
it's just, it's massive. It's unbelievable. It covers a quarter of Nebraska. 20,000 square miles is covered by the sand hills. Mostly prairie land, but let me tell you, it is something that you have to see to believe. It's massive, it's cattle land, and that's pretty much all they can do there is raise cattle. But there's wildlife, and you would not believe it if you're just driving around because you're just saying there's nothing here. There's not that many trees, there's not really any woodlots. Don't let that fool you. There's tons of wildlife. There's tons of birds, there's pheasants, there's prairie chickens, there's wild turkeys, and there's deer. Lots of mule deer and lots of whitetail. Here in north central Nebraska, we got a good population of whitetail and mule deer. I'd say right here, we're maybe a little heavier on the whitetails, maybe 60, 40. Yeah, I've been on this ranch for about 10 years now. I uh, moved back from college and realized that the hunting was pretty good around here and thought that it's an opportunity I could take advantage of. And uh, it just kind of went from there. So our destination was Goose Creek Outfitters near Ellesmere, Nebraska. Don't try to Google it because it doesn't even show up on the map. Very small town, pretty much in the middle of nowhere. But this is family land from Scott and LaKayla Fink, and they have a wonderful operation. It's a working cattle ranch. Scott, LaKayla, and their children all work on the farm. But when it comes to hunting season, they're all about deer hunting. And let me tell you, their deer hunting camp is something special. I've been there twice. It's like being with family and it's like being in an old time deer camp. We're gonna sit down to some great meals at the end of the day. And best of all, we're gonna sit down to some great camaraderie at the end of the day. So my first visit was the year before. And when you're hunting in Nebraska, your tag is good for a whitetail or a mule deer. Lo and behold, that first morning of my first hunt, two big mule deer came in. I could not resist. I was done right away. Oh. Pretty damn close. <laughs> okay, I'm hunting with a crossbow. Still bow hunting in my book. And when you're in Nebraska, just like any other western state, it's windy. This trip, it was really, really windy those first couple days. I mean, it was blowing so hard that we were trying to figure out, if I get a shot, am I gonna even be able to make it? Especially at something that's, you know, 20, 30, 40 yards away. Didn't quite know about that. So that first day, that first afternoon when we got there, just like any other time when you get to camp, you got to make sure that thing is sighted in and ready to go. <laughs> it was windy, and that's what we were looking at. You know, first sit, we go out, we're in a ground blind. I mean, it's rattling windy. I mean, the windows are flapping, grass is swaying really bad in front of us. It shuts it down. You know, wind will shut down deer, and that's what we saw the first sit. We didn't see too much, got us excited for what was in store for the next sit. You know, one of my pet peeves when watching TV is when people whisper. I don't have to whisper today. It is loud out here. I've never quite experienced anything like this. Sustained winds of 35 miles an hour with gusts over 50. Straight line winds. You can hear it, it's crazy. But, here's the thing. You know, with deer hunting, you always think, Deer are going to behave how they behave where you hunt. Well, these deer out here in Nebraska are used to this. Back home in Wisconsin, I would not see a deer in this kind of weather. I'm really interested not only to see some deer, but to see how they behave out here in these type of conditions. Sure enough, I mean, it was windy, a lot of deer came out, but we just didn't see quite the buck that we wanted to take on that set. I'd say wind probably affects their behavior a little bit. I mean, it just, uh, instead of being out in the wide open, you know, they don't like the wind just blowing on them all day, so they'll kind of tuck in behind tree lots, and just like we are, they, they want to get out of the wind just like a person would. When we come back. He hits the trail in front of us, and he turns, and he's, I, this is gonna happen. I'm filling my tag right now. It's a beautiful deer, beautiful mature buck, very representative of the Sand Hills. Land of Whitetail is brought to you by 
10 point crossbow technologies. There is no substitute. By sever broadheads, straight through it. I sent killer gold with Hunt Dry Plus technology. Apply it, dry it, and go hunt. B&W Trailer Hitches Tow and Stow, the last trailer hitch you'll ever need. So you're in the sand hills, it's wide open, it's windy, it's October, and it's cold. Cold front came through, and that next morning, although we were in an enclosed blind, it was super cold. I mean, I had rubber boots on, my gloves weren't quite up to par, and that's a good tip, make sure you bring warm gloves. Well, the wind is still blowing. <laughs> it's sustained 35 mile an hour winds, and it's borderline crazy to be out here, but this is the only way you can do it. You know, if you're gonna hunt in wind, bless your heart if you can sit in a tree stand, I can, and not in 35 mile an hour winds. I'd be like a tetherball up there, but we have deer moving. The rut is going. We have white tail bucks chasing white tail does, and we've actually seen some mule deer bucks chasing mule deer does. So there's hope. Um, the wind's gonna really be blowing more today. So we're gonna try to get into a bottom tonight and the wind is gonna lay down. And I really have a good feeling what's in store for us. And I just kind of notch forward on my chair and I look, oh my gosh, here comes a buck. This buck is cruising along a high grass swamp, just like Scott said might happen and he's scent checking it for does. It's really cool to see, and it happens like that. I mean, here he comes, he's got his head down, he's sniffing, he's checking every trail coming in and out of there. We get positioned because we know what's gonna happen. He's probably gonna come right into our lap. It's really quiet, really quiet. We had the window open, the wind was just rattling that thing. He hits the trail in front of us, and he turns and he's, I, this is gonna happen. I'm filling my tag right now. It's a beautiful deer, beautiful mature buck, very representative of the sand hills. And just as he's gonna get into my shooting lane, I'm waiting for him to turn broadside. He's gonna walk right in front of me 15 yards. And just as he's gonna get into shooting position, he cuts back in. That buck must have caught just a tiny bit of our scent. He turned and he went the other way. Hey, that's hunting. You know, I was very disappointed. Oh, God. He, he didn't bust. <laughs> he scooted that way, but. You know, let's be honest, a lot of guys are gonna sit there and wax poetic, like, oh, I had this great encounter. You know, it was just nice to see him. No, I wanted that deer. Come on. We froze to death this morning. I'm shivering. Ugh. No cliche is gonna make this better. No cliche like, oh, that's why they call it hunting. No, no, this sucks. I wanted that buck. But how many times do we get this wrong? You sit there for three, four hours, five hours, six hours, and you're not seeing anything. And you're looking at your watch and you wanna go. It's just like, it's not happening, I wanna go. The tip is to always look around the blind through every window methodically. He was about 200 yards away when I saw him. And I just saw a little glitter. Oh, yeah, it's a deer but always check every direction around your blind before you get out. You just never know when a deer is gonna sneak in on you. It happens so many times when you have a close call, you're rewarded with something even better. And that's what happened on this day. You're gonna see a ton of deer, he told us, because they're all filtering out of this cottonwood bottom and going up to this egg field. It's a center pivot field. I mean, tons of deer are gonna show up. He said, just sit tight and be ready. Be on your toes, because he said they could come from anywhere. I'm looking out the back window. 
back window's facing that center pivot field, and there's piles of deer. And I'm watching them, watching them, watching them, full well knowing that if I'm gonna get a shot, it's gonna be this way. It's gonna be out my left window here. And lo and behold, I'm looking this way, and Fred taps me on the knee and he goes, Dan, 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 look, 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 look. And I look, boom, here comes a buck, and a really nice one at that, right into shooting range. We just did it. We just got our Nebraska bug. <laughs> it's the rut, and you never know what's gonna happen. Uh, we've been sitting here, we have deer just pouring out of this river bottom. Oh my gosh, look at this. <laughs> I don't care what anybody says. It's not just the thrill, it's the kill. Oh, he's beautiful. He is beautiful. Look at that. Holy cow, what a beautiful Nebraska buck. One, two, three, four, five. He's a 10. He's a 10, you know, we were watching a 10 and he walked out of our lives. And what did the good Lord bring us? Another 10 pointer. It's a very low pressure situation. Sometimes this time of year, you just gotta set it out and give it some time because those deer are uh, running from one tree lot to the next and it, you know, it might just be a matter of time before they come running through. Dan was using the new Sever Broadhead to put his Nebraska buck down quickly and humanely. Coming up next, he puts the Sever to the test on some Florida hogs. straight through that hog. I know the arrow was still in it, but did you see the flood come out of that thing? Holy cow, did that thing put a hit on that pig. Nice sized meat hog right there. That's what we came down here for. That Sever Broadhead just absolutely destroyed that hog just now. We've been here for 10 minutes and these hogs came in. <laughs> My heart is beating so fast. Okay, with the Sever Broadhead, talk about a stretch cut, a slap cut, whatever you want to call it with an expandable broadhead, this magnifies it. This is 2.1 inches on the broadhead alone. That slap cut, it could be three, it could be more. When it hits, it stretches the hide and makes that wound even bigger. Leads to massive hemorrhaging, short blood trails. With the Sever blade system, they're stainless steel blades and they're fully contained inside the titanium ferrule. The only part they're showing is the deployment arms out here. Once it starts to penetrate the animal, those deployment arms catch and then they lock into position. They're on a pivot, so if you're in a steep quartering shot or if you happen to catch bone as it's going through, those blades will pivot as they continue to cut. This really aids in the penetration. Wide entry wounds, so you're gonna get a lot of blood. So sever broadheads really help with the penetration easy to follow blood trail and better recovery. My whitetail hunting, it's all about traveling. Sure, I get to hunt from home once in a while, but to make a living, I've gotta be running from state to state. All my successful hunts though, they start right here in the laundry room. I wanna make sure all of my clothes are scent free before I leave home. And that starts with making sure my clothes wash are scent free by using scent eliminating products and getting rid of all those nasty smells from the other laundry detergents. 
Once I'm done with that, I load up the clothes washer and I add in a trusted laundry detergent that ensures that my clothes smell like, well, they smell like nothing. And that's what the deer should be smelling too. Absolutely nothing. And that's how I start my road trips for deer hunting. So now that you have all of your hunting clothes washed, they're scent free with Scent Killer Gold laundry detergent, you need to get them to your hunting destination scent free. A good scent free bag will get them there. A lot of companies make these, but if you're a little uh, short on the money, just go to a big box store, buy one of those rubber totes, take your Scent Killer Gold spray, spray it out, wash it out, make sure it's clean and you can take all of your hunting clothes neatly folded, stack them in there, and it's easy to carry in and out of hunting camp. Now, I oftentimes go from one destination, say I'm going from Illinois to Kansas to hunt, and I'll get there before daybreak. I want to get out my tree stand. Well, I'm not going to waste another hour taking a shower, so field wipes like these Scent Killer Gold field wipes allow me to take a quick bath right there in my truck now getting in and out of your truck, you can contaminate your hunting clothes with whatever's in your truck, but not me. I've got scent free seat covers and with my scent killer gold scent eliminating spray, I can just spray them down and ensure that when I jump in, I'm not grabbing extra scent. You want to definitely not stink when you get to your hunting destination.